Hello, my friends. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another week of the answers for the uh, Q&A weekly videos. Um, little housekeeping first. Uh, okay, how exhausted <laughs> is everybody right now? Like, oh my goodness, this is just unbelievable. I My videos that I want to be sending out for you are just starting to pile up. I just, I'm doing my best here, but this is incredible. I have not, it, the energies are just extreme. Like I have not slept more than oh, maybe two hours a night since like the fifth or the sixth. And I have no idea what the date is anymore. Um, the 12th or 13th. I think today's the 13th. So I am punchy. <laughs> just, I find myself hysterical right now. <laughs> I'm just, uh, but you know, it is what it is. So we just, uh, we just work with this, right? We just, we just do what we can. And, uh, learn this new way of being. Um, yeah, I'm up all night, just completely wired with um, excitement and information flowing in. And my light team's like, record this, record this. And I'm saying, no, 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 it's sleepy time right now. And they're saying, no, no, no. <laughs> and I just can't get myself out of bed. And then I finally get up at five because I always wake up at five and uh oh then 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 my day happens <laughs> so bear with me on this video I am I am uh hopefully going to be making sense uh e even my channelings are are a little punchy because I'm having a hard time hanging into a vibration without falling asleep because I get really relaxed and then I start to lose it as I fall asleep. So let's see what happens with this video. Um, so let's just jump into the questions and I will do my best to try to keep this under half an hour. If there are really good questions, then I will uh, do a separate video when the energies let me do them. So let's see what the questions are. Okay, first one. Um, is our ascension in our control? Can we ascend right now or does it require certain activation and cosmic alignments? Do we have to wait for the collective to catch up? Great question. Um, everything is within our control, always. Our higher self might kick in a little bit here and there, but we do have full and complete control over what we want to do. Um, now, we cannot just ascend like that. There, only a master would be able to ascend. And right now, mm, maybe a couple everywhere in, in, in the world, there, there's almost nobody here who's capable of sending, who's capable of maintaining that high of a vibration right now. Because remember, we're, we're talking about moving to a completely different frequency. Like what, once we reach a certain frequency, we're going to be not seen by a lower frequency because we're going to be vibrating so fast. It's the difference between having a, a, an ice cube versus a gas mist of, of water, like one versus the other, completely different. So yes, you can speed up your ascension process by um, basically just living the golden rule. Do unto others as you want them to be done unto you for everything, for everything. If you don't want someone telling you what to do, then don't tell someone else what to do. Um, that's that's kind of a big one. Um, but activate your DNA. You have to get that DNA activated. We only have a fraction of it activated. <clears throat> Excuse me. We need it activated. Um, 
is called junk DNA because they don't know what it does, but we do. (laughs) So you need to activate your DNA. It needs to be turned back on. It needs to be rebundled. It's an entire process. We physically are incapable of being at a higher vibration for more than a few seconds, depending upon where your DNA activation is at, you might be able to handle it for a few minutes, but you need to get your DNA activated. So you need to command and decree, I hereby command my DNA to be activated for the freedom codes to come within me from the sun, like whatever you want to do to activate yourself, you need to activate your DNA so you can be on the front lines of the ascension process. Now, um, that being said, um, I'm just watching somebody walk their dog right now and my baby's outside. So my fur baby and just want to make sure everything's hunky dory there. Um, so I'm just going to hit pause for a quick second. Okay. So, uh, um, okay. So you have to remember as well, um, almost every single one of you, almost every single one of you who are interested in communicating with Arcturians, with the Pleiadians, with any of the star families, almost every single one of you are not from Earth. (laughs) Almost every single one of you are star seeds. And that means you have gone through the ascension process already. You understand what it means. You have memories in there. You know what the colors are going to look like. You know what it's going to feel like. You're not here to sprint to the ascension. Well, we're in the ascension, but you're not here to sprint to reach that next level. That's not why you came here. You came here to show everybody else who have been stuck here for lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after blah, 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 because they have gotten lost. And we volunteer to come here to show them, to guide them how to do this, not to sprint to it and to leave everybody else behind. We came here deliberately to show them, to guide them slowly how to do this. So even if you could sprint to the next level, um, that's honestly not why you're here. You, your higher self probably will kick in and would say, slow down, slow down, just live the path, show others how to live a beautiful life, how to live this magical life, because the more you live a glorious, fun, fantastic amazing life, you're going to get the human's attentions. You're They're going to be caught up in their little world that's going on, that's crashing around them. And they're going to see you having this amazing life and, and feel how happy you are. And they're going to be drawn to you. That's why you don't want to sprint and try to jump to the next level. You just want to have this great, fantastic time and just let others come to you. And that's how we kind of pull them slowly towards facing new earth. So that is really what our job is for the most part when we're dealing with um, wanting to ascend. So I understand wanting to get out of here. I, I, I gotcha. I understand it. Oh boy, I get it. (laughs) But we have to remember, we we, uh, volunteered for this. And if you're not having a great time, change it. You should be having a fantastic time. You should be having such an amazing fun time. And if you're not, Look at what you're doing because that's why you came here is to have a great time, to be having a party every single day of your life and to get everyone else's attention to come and look to see what you're doing, to see why you're having a good time. If you 
are not having a good time, then you have gone sucked into the third dimensional world. So get yourself out of that. Have a great time. And then you won't even care about when the moving of the ascension process is. So I hope that helps. Um, let's just... Yeah, you do require certain activations. So that's the DNA activation. Um, you want to activate your Taurus field. Um, T-O-R-U-S, uh, the Taurus field. So there's a lot of physics involved with all of this stuff as well. So um, might want to brush up on Taurus fields and how they flow and, and the magnetic um, currents that there are within you. So that's what I would recommend right now. Um, and do we have to wait for the collective to catch up? We don't have to wait. Um, it will be happening in shifts. Um, some will go first and there'll be some more and then some more. And then, and then finally at the end, there'll be all of those who don't know that they should be doing the best to clean themselves up. But those who live a life of the golden rule, that that's really all you have to do. Um, so those reincarnated humans who have been stuck here, if they live through the golden rule, they live their life that way by wanting to help others, then they'll just naturally ascend at their own pace later on. But then those who are here more for um, teaching everyone else will be going a little sooner before they do, but we're not going to just want to dart out of here. So next one. How do I discover my life purpose? How do I discover the job I volunteered for? Um, that's part of the fun is the journey. Um, so basically it is whatever makes you happy. That's your job. If, um, sitting and playing in the sand and making sandcastles all day is your ultimate joy, then that's what you're here to do. And somehow, some way you would be sending charges through the sand that then would be affecting everyone else. It doesn't matter how silly it seems. Whatever you are passionate about, that is what you are here for. Um, and if nothing comes to mind as to what you're passionate about yet, it's because it, you have not yet allowed yourself to go on that journey. So start doing things that you like to do. Um, if you like to dance, dance a little more often. If you, and then see where that leads. If you like to read, read a little more, see where that leads you. You just have to follow the steps that are laid out for you. It, you're just not going to wake up one day and have this epiphany of what your purpose is. Um, my, <laughs> I have wanted to be everything <laughs> at this point. I, you name it, I've wanted to do it. I thought it was my life purpose and it just keeps growing and evolving and evolving and evolving and evolving. And that's the fun. That's the journey is you start evolving and you get to see where you're evolving to. And as we all evolve, our purposes evolve as well. You don't have just one purpose and then that's that. You're going to be growing and changing and what you can contribute will grow and change as well. So allow the evolution of yourself. Follow your instincts to want to do something. Do that for a little bit. You might be completely blissed out on something for about two months and then all of a sudden it started to lose its excitement. So then that means to look at what it was that you were really psyched up about and really think about what was that? What was in that that I enjoyed so much? And then that will take you to the next step. That's all it is. You just have to follow the breadcrumbs that you've laid out for yourself. 
and uh, just have fun trying new things. That's how that works. Okay, next one. Okay, so uh, a person is really, uh, a, a friend of someone is very, if you have a friend of someone who is really caught up in very low third dimensional activities and traumas and they you feel like they're kind of dragging you down with them, what do you do? Um, I will do a video on that. It is uh, something that every single starseed, every single one of us um, has issues with and we all have this thing going on. Um, yeah, I will do a video just for that one. Okay. Um, are there any things we should be doing to better prepare for the upcoming chaos uh, within the third dimensional world so that has minimal effects on us? Uh, yes. Um, don't pay attention to it. Um, focus upon activating your DNA. Focus upon um, having your Taurus field spin faster. Um, get your energy spinning faster and faster. Focus upon things that make you happy. Even if it's silly things, focus upon things that make you happy. Don't look at the world. If it's bothering you, don't, don't look at it. Do your best to avoid it. Um, I am supposed to do a channeling on, uh, how to look at dark things and transmute them into light. So uh, do a, I'm supposed to do one on alchemy that they gave me during the nighttime a few nights ago. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna get to that because, oh my goodness, I'm so tired. <laughs> so uh, I will, um, yeah, just for now, ignore whatever's going on. And then um, in the next little while when I can, I'll put out a video of how you can look at dark things and uh, transmute them into light. So I'll, I'll do that um, soon. Um, when the final shift occurs, what will be the first thing we experience? What will happen to physical buildings and wall animals and all that kind of stuff? Okay, all those things doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. It, it. Don't worry about the details. They don't affect you. If you're thinking about those types of details, you're focusing upon um, things that are taking your attention away. As much as you're curious about that stuff, it, it, and I understand that completely, um, but don't worry about what's happening when we ascend. We're not there. There's other things to deal with now. So instead of focusing way out there, let's let's focus upon what's going on here right now and what we can do um, as a community um, to help spread the light. So let's focus upon stuff going on here instead and um we'll we'll think about all that stuff later okay. when we ascend to five, okay i think this means when when we ascend to 5d and um the others don't how are they going to perceive us um well this is uh, this is the thing. Um, it, it's not just a switch that's going to happen. All of a sudden, half of everybody just disappears. We are in the process of fading out of each other's lives. Have you had um, friends recently in the last 10 years that you don't speak to anymore for no real reason other than you just kind of drifted apart? It's that kind of thing. Or do you have uh, family members that um, some may have died or others just have moved away and you only talk to them 
briefly, maybe once a year now or something, we're, we're slowly drifting apart from other people. We're just slowly drifting. Or you may find that all of a sudden you get a fantastic job opportunity and you have to move someplace else. And in so doing, you leave behind your old life and everyone's happy for you and excited for you. And you just kind of lose touch with everybody that you used to know. That's what's going on. It's nothing is dramatic. Nothing's going to be painful. We're just drifting. We're just losing touch with people that we used to know. We're no longer, um, hanging out with the same group of friends. We've changed interests or they've changed interests and, and we don't want to be around them anymore because they only want to, uh, go to a certain type of restaurant and we're now interested in going to a different type of restaurant. You're just drifting apart slowly. Nothing is going to be dramatic. It's just this slow evolution. It's an evolution. It's always slow. And that's why everyone is wondering what's going on, what's happening, because they're not noticing anything has changed. But things are changing all the time. How awful would it be for these things to just happen? Like, it, it would be traumatic. It, nobody likes instant change like that. It's really... um traumatic on our emotional bodies to have to deal with anything quickly like that. So we want this slow evolution of things, of people just drifting out of our lives. Objects that we don't need anymore that may have a low vibration. Maybe we accident accidentally break them and things are just drifting. They're just drifting. So that's how this works. Uh, next question here. How can we help and guide higher beings who are trapped in their own dimension? Um, okay. So this will also tie into the, the question um, about helping other people who are uh, coming to you, asking you to help them, um, which I'll do a different video on. But I am going to say for anyone who is um, exploring the dimensional realms and they're coming into contact with all of these other types of beings, you have to be very clear about your intention and your vibration that you are setting out there. You have to know yourself. You have to know what your antenna is. You have to understand very clearly um every darker aspect that you actually have that you may not think is significant, but it is. Every little thing is. So if you have anyone that you come into contact with, whether it's in physical form or in um, the dimensional non-physical form, if anyone's coming to you and asking for help, asking for assistance, Hmm. Do you see what I'm trying to say here? Um, that's not pure love and light. That's not pure love and light. They would not come to you asking you for assistance. So you are sending out a vibration to someone saying, come to me. I will help you. I will sacrifice myself to help you. And that vibration that you're sending out is not pure love and light either. So if anyone ever comes to you when you are in meditation asking for assistance, that is a wonderful opportunity to um, thank them for coming to you because it gives you a chance to look within yourself. And uh, if you want to go down that route, that road and uh, see what happens when you try to help a non-physical being, you can. Um, you'll learn a lot. Um, um, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Uh, there's a reason why I always say to vet out very carefully whom you are coming into contact with and uh, be very clear about 
who you do want to come into contact with. And if it's not beautiful beings that are there to offer themselves to you, to help you, you, I just, um, it's a, it's a very intriguing world that, um, universe that's out there in the dimensions, very intriguing. So just, uh, be careful what you do, but I would say anything that comes to you asking for help, um, mm, I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> um, next one here. For how long do we go through this unstable process? Um, well, that's the switch over. It, it, it's, it's unstable. Well, everything's unstable forever. Every, nothing is ever steady. Nothing is ever stable. Everything is always unstable. Everything's a wave. It, waves aren't stable. Everything's always shifting. So, um, yeah, from here on, it's just, it's just crazy. So enjoy the rides. It's unstable. It's always going to be weird and it's just going to keep getting more weird and, uh, or, or just, learn to evolve and roll with what's ever happening. So next one. Can the Arcturians shed any light on why one half of many divine counterparts and twin flames are asleep to the connection? Um, so what I heard was, uh, it will either be one of two reasons. They will either, it's just not their time to wake up yet. But if you believe that you have come into contact with your twin flame and they are not yet awake to the twin flame connection, then they are not your twin flame. You will, they, everyone will feel it. They will feel it. They won't know what they're feeling, but they will feel it. So if you feel something, some sort of connection to someone, but they don't feel it back, they are not your twin flame. They are someone who you were meant to meet up with and learn from, but they are not your twin flame. Yet they might, but not at that point. Twin flames come in and out of your lives. They are not permanent. They are there for teaching purposes. They are there for growth purposes. Twin flames are not the romantic, idealized version that is put out there that people believe that they're going to have the most beautiful, glorious, loving relationship that they could ever possibly have with their twin flame. That's not your twin flame. Your twin flame will be the perfect, perfect match for you to help you learn and grow. And when you learn and grow, you don't learn and grow by ease. You don't learn and grow by fun. <laughs> you, you, for, um, you can, but it's a very slow, slow process. Um, your twin flame is what is going to challenge you the most. That is your twin flame. So if they are still asleep to the connection, then they are either not your twin flame or they still have some stuff that they need to experience first prior to awakening. And then they might be able to connect with you on that. But you also have multiple twin flames that you have put out there for you to meet up with, depending upon where you are in your experience. But yeah, 
Twin flames are not a beautiful, romantic, idealized, lovey-dovey thing. That's different. Um, your twin flame is the perfect, perfect partner for you. You two have chosen prior to incarnating to teach each other. That is the most beautiful relationship, but it's not a fun relationship. <laughs> not in this, this world here. Um, so make sure you understand that your twin flame is, is, um, that you will never, never be able to learn from anyone or anything to the level and to the degree, um, to the mastery ability that your twin flame will provide to you. That is the gift that you two have agreed to prior to incarnating that you will help each other grow like no other possible way of growing. Like this is the ultimate gift to each other. But again, that does not come with fun and that does not come with ease. So, um, yeah, <laughs> just thought I, that they wanted that to be clear there. So I hope I answered that question. Um, okay. And, uh, I'm going to call it a day on the questions right now and, um, see what I can do about doing some channelings and, uh, doing some of these big topic ones. So I love you all so much. I really do. Thank you. Thank you all for being here for all growing together. We're all evolving together. And I love each of you so much. You're my soul family. You're my soul friends. Take care, everybody. I love you. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.